Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Live at 555 today. Um, good to see all of you here. Uh, we're wrapping up James chapter 2 this morning. Um, so if you guys have your Bibles, James chapter 2, verses 25 through 26. Um, as we look at these uh, last couple of verses in James chapter 2, as um, James is talking to his readers about... Um, Faith and works and justification um, before the sight of man. And uh, yesterday he used Abraham as an example from the Old Testament um, to prove his point. Today he's going to use another Old Testament example. Abraham would be the father of the faith of Judaism. Now he's going to use a Gentile example from the Old Testament, a lady by the name of Rahab. So he says in verse number 25, Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. <clears throat> so he, he, he's continuing on with his point here and he goes, now, remember Rahab from the Old Testament. And we read about her in the book of Joshua. Well, we're going to get to that story on Wednesday night here in probably three or four weeks um, but the spies went into the land, and Rahab was there, and she helped kind of hide the spies and protect them uh, from uh, the other people. And he says, wasn't Rahab uh, the harlot, wasn't she also justified by works when she received the messengers, uh, the messengers of Israel, uh, and she sent them out another way? He then goes on to say, so then, in verse 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. He says, in our lives, it's as if our, 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 our works are like the spirit, our body is like the faith, and if the spirit is void of the body and the body is dead, that's how it is in our lives when faith without Works is dead. Now, here's what's fascinating about both of these examples that James uses to um, describe justification by works in the sight of men. If you take faith out of either Abraham's equation or out of Rahab's equation, those are not good works. They're actually bad works. They're actually illegal works. What was the work that justified Abraham in the sight of men. It was the willingness to offer his son Isaac. If you take faith out of that equation, that is craziness. That's madness. But when you add faith to the equation, it's acceptable. Rahab, what was she um, guilty of, and I mean that in a good way, actually. What was she guilty of doing? What was her works that justified? Hiding away, treason, Hi hiding spies from the government, essentially. That's what she did. Is that a good work? It's an illegal work. But when you add faith to it, it actually is a good thing. This is what's fascinating, because James here is not, when we think of uh, reading the book of James, and he's talking about how we're justified in the sight of man by our our good works. We think that good works is like praying and going to church and reading our Bible. No, 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 no. The, the, these works that he's talking about without faith would be completely out of context. So when he's saying that we're justified in the sight of man by our works, he's saying it's when we're responding to the faith that we have. It's when we're responding to the, the leading of God's Holy Spirit on our hearts and in our lives. When we're uh, receptive to that, when we're responding to that, and other people looking at our lives and see that, it is then um, the, the, the faith in our life that's being worked out through our works that men then see and we were then justified in the sight of man. Now, yesterday I had someone send in a question, and it's actually a pretty good question, because they said, now, I'm just a little bit confused, because uh, yesterday, and now today we're on the same topic, you're talking about how we're justified in the sight of God, and how we're justified in the sight of man. We're justified in the sight of God by our faith, we're justified in the sight of man by our works, 
why do I need to be justified in the sight of man? Uh, doesn't the Bible say, and we just studied this a few Sunday mornings ago in Matthew chapter 6, that when you do your charitable deeds, don't be blowing a trumpet. Uh, don't have a crowd gather around. Don't be like the hypocrites. So if we're supposed to be um, justified before men by our works, yet Jesus taught us on the Sermon on the Mount that uh, we should not let our, we shouldn't uh, do our good works to glorify ourselves or in the sight of men. We should do it in the sight of God. How does that all tie together? Well, it goes back to Matthew chapter five when Jesus says, "Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven." You see, when we are justified by faith in the sight of God. And then we are justified by that faith that's working out in our lives in the sight of men. That is allowing man to then see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Our motive, though, in doing the, our motive to responding to our faith, our motive to working out our faith in our life in the sight of man is not to get man's approval, though. Even though that is what justifies us in the sight of man, the motive, the why, the heart behind it is not to get an attaboy from the sight of man, but it's just the, it's just the, the reaction of the faith. You are justified by faith in the sight of God. That now starts to work out in your lives. And as a result, man is going to see it. We see what other people do. People are going to look in on your life and they're going to see you working out your faith and they're going to uh, come to the conclusion that this person has faith because of what's being worked out in their life. And because of that, you've now been justified in their sight. Again, the, the desire behind it, the why behind it is not to build yourself up on a pedestal and have people ooh and awe around you. It's just the natural thing that's going to be happening from you as you, um, are, as you have faith to God. It's going to be worked out in your life amongst works amongst other people. So James just kind of lays this out here. So, so that's not contradicting the Sermon on the Mount, which we just studied uh, a few weeks ago when, when Jesus says, hey, don't, don't, don't do your charitable deeds in front of everyone. He says, do them before the Lord. Yeah, that's what we're doing. But as you're, it's just going to happen. You, you're just going to, your faith will just be worked out amongst people. People will observe it and it'll drive them to glorifying your father who is in heaven. So that's kind of how that all ties in just to answer that question that was submitted yesterday about how those two things kind of balance out. So again, I want us to just realize actually what James never says here in his book as he's using these examples of Abraham and of Rahab, he never says Abraham was justified by faith and works. Rahab was justified by faith and works. What does he say? He says, Abraham is justified by works. Rahab was justified by works. Why doesn't he say by faith and works? Because he is not talking about justification by faith in the sight of God. He's talking about justification by works in the sight of men. That You are only justified by faith in the sight of God. That's it. He never adds the faith and works. You, you, if you read James chapter 2 carefully, um, without any preconceived notion, you're not walking away saying, it seems like James is telling me I'm justified by faith and works. No, James is telling you you're justified by works in the sight of men. That's his point. He, 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 whoosh, there's, a, there's a distinction that we've made clear there as we've been studying out James chapter 2. So with that, uh, we'll just kind of wrap things up this morning. That's what we want to look at today. We're going to start James chapter 3 tomorrow as we move in. We're going to talk about some interesting things. Uh, we've been kind of in a theological doctrinal section. We're going to get back to some pretty practical stuff. James is going to talk about our tongue. He's going to talk about what comes out of our mouth. He's going to talk about our words convicting stuff. So uh, yeah, as we continue our lives at 555s through the book of James, we're going to see some some more good, good stuff. Um, 
And I wanted to go through some of these passages a little slower that were kind of misunderstood so that we can be sure that we kind of get a good handle on them. So I uh, hope you guys have a good morning. Yesterday, I was a little off if you watched the live at uh, 555. I just woke up for some reason. Lucia, I can wake up and I'm pretty awake pretty quickly and with it. Yesterday, I just woke up. I had some sinus pressure. My throat was kind of hurting from some allergies. And I, 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 I didn't pray. I didn't mention Mother's Day at our live at 555. I was just kind of a little bit out of it. So I apologize for that today. I'm feeling much better. Um, so that's good. But let's, uh, let's pray and then we will uh, get on with our day. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for today. Lord, thank you for um, your love, God, and your grace. And Lord, thank you that we are um, justified by faith, Lord, in your sight. But Lord, like we read this morning in James, Lord, we're justified by works in the sight of men. And Lord, that doesn't mean we're trying to get man's approval. Lord, that just means we're, we're just doing what you've called us to do. Lord, and as we do what you've called us to do, Lord, people are going to see it. And Lord, I pray that when people look in on our lives, Lord, that they would see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven, Lord, that they would glorify you. Um, Lord, that it wouldn't be about us trying to get attention, but Lord, that, that we would make your name famous. God, I just pray that you would be with us today. God, keep us safe, keep us healthy. Um, God, thank you for uh, the uh, Lord, just the beautiful morning that it is. And um, Lord, we just ask that you would uh, give us wisdom, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great, great um, Monday morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning live at 5.55 as we start James chapter 3. Some good, good stuff. And then... Um, Tomorrow morning, we're also starting our Tuesday morning worship here at the sanctuary starting at 7 a.m. So if you uh, have time, maybe on your way before work between 7 and 8 a.m., we'll be having uh, live worship going on here. Communion will be available to the side. You can just kind of come before the Lord in prayer, in worship, in uh, in. Uh, it's a corporate setting, but it's a personal thing, and that's the thing that I'm excited about seeing how that works out, uh, because it's a, it's a, it is a very personal connection that you're able to have with the Lord, but we're offering it corporately for people um, on Tuesday mornings, our Tuesday morning worship from 7 uh, to 8 a.m. Uh, you'll be able to just um, spend some quiet time. You can sing. You can just sit and pray. You can take communion. Maybe you're pondering. Maybe you're asking. Maybe you've been seeking and asking and knocking from the Lord and life is just so busy and you really don't have time to just kind of sit down and, and wait on the Lord and just kind of sit in silence or with worship and just kind of see what he's saying. This will be a great opportunity for that to just come in uh, with a, a, not a lot of distraction just kind of sit at the feet of Jesus on Tuesday mornings and just kind of hear and receive from the Lord uh, in that way. So excited for what the Lord is going to do through that. I hope you guys have a blessed uh, rest of your day. And again, we'll see you tomorrow morning live at 555. And I apologize for not having the Sunday service streaming at 9. I know that threw a lot of you off and there was a little bit of confusion, but we're all on the same page now. And starting next week, we'll be back to live streaming on Facebook and on our website at 9 a.m. We'll be streaming the 9 a.m. service. Um, and then for those that just want to join at 11, they can re-watch the 9 a.m. one. Uh, <laughs> as that wasn't happening, my phone's I get like seven text messages. People are are, are uh, messaging the Facebook page. Some people are calling me, you know, where's the stream? Where's the stream? And I'm just like, I don't know. And I look back and, and, and yeah, I guess they were waiting to live stream the 11. Uh, but now, anyway, we're all on the same page. We'll be back to live streaming our 9 a.m. service on Sunday mornings uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, so that'll... Uh, be better for you guys that get up at that time and like watching it then. And then if you don't, hey, you just get to watch it. Re you can rewatch it whatever you want after it's put up there. So anyway, have a good day. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning.